Okay, guys and girls, here we go. Um, week two of virtual lectures with Coach Simmons in, um, through Zoom meetings. And so, um, as you can see here on this first slide, we're going to start off. Um, we're doing unit six now. We've moved on from supply and demand, and we're moving now into macroeconomics. Um, we're moving into big picture, whole economy, um, information, how is the economy as a whole doing, um, not just individual businesses, not just individual people, but the, um, the economy as a whole. Um, a lot of this stuff is going to be relevant, um, much like supply and demand, it's going to be relevant to what's going on with us right now. With the coronavirus, um, there is um, a fear um, of people that our economy is going to slow down that our economy is going to get worse. Um, and hopefully you realize that because um, if people are locked down or quarantined or self quarantined or staying at home, social distancing, whatever it may be, there's a lot of events and a lot of things that would be typical in our world that are not going to happen now because of the coronavirus. Um, if people are not going out and sitting down to eat, Restaurants can't pay their workers, um, and so on and so forth. Okay, so this is the kind of thing we're looking at now is overall big picture. How is the economy as a whole doing? Um, and again, we're looking at macroeconomics here. So unit six, economic indicators and the business cycle is what we're looking at. Now, if you follow along with your guided notes, fill them out, um, and then turn them in once we get through all of the notes. Um, let's go with, with day one and let's start looking at the economic indicators individually. Okay. Now, according to our standards here, um, the first standards that we're looking at, um, social studies, economics, macro, um, macro economics, why the MA is there. Standard one, illustrate the means by which economic activity is measured, identify and describe the macroeconomic goals. Okay, so there, there are goals that the economy, that the government is shooting to try and meet with our economy. And those three goals are listed right here for you. Steady economic growth, okay, steady economic growth, stable prices, and full employment. Those are the three goals that our, that our economy, that our government is trying to reach within our economy. Okay, so let's see exactly what these mean. Um, these are going to be the essential questions we're going to look at throughout um, this unit. Okay, we're going to talk about what makes up gross domestic product, what is not included in gross domestic product, because not everything is included. Um, not everything that is produced or um, is produced in G or counted in GDP. Um, we're talking about inflation, how that's measured, who can gain from inflation. Question is, is all unemployment bad? Um, what part of the business cycle are we in now? Um, and that's, that's changing um, currently because of, again, coronavirus. Um, how does a change in aggregate demand affect the business cycle? And how does a change in aggregate supply affect the business cycle? And this, the, this word here, and actually I just clicked, I just clicked, so I'm going to try not to go away, but this word here, aggregate, that's a big thing to look at. Um, aggregate demand, aggregate supply, that word aggregate means something different than what we just got done talking about with supply and demand. So it's looking at demand and supply from a different perspective and we'll get more to that later. Okay. Now, as far as economic goals go, those three economic goals, these are the goals to reach to make the economy better. So fill, you should see some blanks here in your guided notes, fill those in as we go. Um, the first goal that the government is trying to reach in making the economy better is they want to see steady economic growth and that key word there the key word with this is steady okay we don't just want growth we want steady growth we want things to go on a steady incline okay so you want things to steadily get better and better a little bit better and better if things get too good too fast we can't sustain that okay think about it um, think about like running on a treadmill. You start off at a walk and then you pick up to a jog and then you pick it up a little faster and then a little faster and then a little faster until you're at a full sprint. Okay. That way you can run 
the longer race. If you sprint right from the very beginning, you're not going to be able to sustain that speed for the entire race. Okay. Same thing when it comes to the economy, slow and steady wins the race. Okay. So steady economic growth is the key word there because you're trying to, as, and what do we mean by that? You're trying to raise the standard of living. You're wanting people to have better lives. You're wanting each next generation to have things better than the previous generation through technology, to, through new innovation, through better options, whether it's, it's medicine or restaurants or you know, consumer goods, whatever it may be, you want the next generation to have it better than the previous generation. That's that steady economic growth that you want. Um, and then from there, um, when it comes to prices, you want prices to be stable, okay? You want prices to be stable here. Um, that's the key word when it comes to prices. Again, prices are going to rise. Prices are going to fall. But you just don't want drastic changes, okay? You don't, want, you don't want up and down like this. You want that steady flow here so it's a lot more a lot more stable, a lot easier to handle, and to know what's coming. Um, you want people to know. That's one of the biggest things that, that puts fear into people right now is that people are worried about, you know, can, um, can we maintain, you know, things the way they are? That's, and that's always the case. Um, you got to worry about, you know, People want to know what they're going to have to pay for things. If prices jump up or prices drop, especially if prices jump up, people may or may not be able to adjust their spending accordingly. And then finally, you want full employment. Full employment. And, and I'll tell you this. Go ahead and tell you this right now. Full employment is not 100%. Okay? It is not 100 Because... You know, people want to think, people think the word full and they say, oh, well, everybody's got a job. No, um, that's not possible. We'll talk more about that later, what actual full employment is. But the key to full employment is you want people working so they have money to spend. Um, right now, um, Congress is debating over a stimulus package to get money to people in America. Um, get money into people's hands because, again, nobody, most people have cut way down on their spending. People are staying at home. People aren't going out to eat. People aren't going out shopping. People aren't going to sporting events. People aren't going to all these different things. And so there's been a, a lot of money that's been taken out of the flow of the economy. A lot of money that's been taken out of the circular flow. That money's no longer flowing in that circular flow anymore. And so the government's trying to energize the economy by putting money into people's hands because if you'll stop and think about it for a minute anytime you put money into people's hands it immediately starts burning a hole in their pocket and they want to spend it okay so full employment you want people working so they have money to spend because the key thing with all three of these economic goals is people spending money okay that is the key thing is people spending money. The more money people spend, the better the economy typically gets. Okay. That circular flow can't keep going unless money is involved and money is being spent. Okay. Now, how do we know how the economy is doing? Um, that would be what we call our economic indicators. Okay. These are the things um, our economic indicators tell you how the economy is doing, and if it needs help, okay? Um, okay, so it tells you how the economy is doing and if it needs help. Um, you see all these pictures over here to the side, right over here? These are all indicator lights from a car. And when you get in a car and you crank it up, all these things, all these symbols light up on the dashboard. And then if everything is running the way it's supposed to, those lights go away. But if something is wrong with the car and your car needs help, beep, 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 these things all light up. Um, whatever's wrong gets lit up so that you know that something has happened, happening that's not supposed to. Okay, or you need to be aware that this is happening because it may have an effect on something else. 
okay? So these are all called indicator lights. Well, we have indicator lights for our economy, and those indicator lights are GDP, the inflation rate, and the unemployment rate. These are the three things that we use as indicators of how our economy is currently doing. The one we're gonna look at today, first and foremost, is GDP, okay? And then over the next couple of days, we'll do notes on the inflation rate and the unemployment rate and what in unemployment is and, um, and all those things as well, okay? So we'll go over each one of these on separate days. Today, again, we're gonna start here with the first one, which is GDP. Okay, so what is that? What what does our standard look for here? Um, says that you need to be able to define gross domestic product as the sum of consumer spending, investment, government spending, and net exports. So we're going to look at individually what are these four things that make up gross domestic product, and then we're also going to define real GDP. What is real GDP? Um, there are multiple types of GDP. If you um, look up GDP. Um, if you Google it, you'll get real GDP, you'll get nominal GDP, you'll get GDP per capita, real GDP per capita, um, and, and, uh, and several others. Um, the ones we're focusing on is what GDP is in general and what real GDP is. Now, so what is GDP as a whole? GDP is a measure of spending and activity in the economy. In other words, GDP is trying to see how much money is being spent. How much money is being spent, how much money is going around and around in that circular flow diagram. Um, that we that we talked about before, okay, um, in the in unit four, okay. So measuring of that spending and activity. How do we measure how much money is being spent? How much activity is going on in the economy? Okay. Um, well, this is the way GDP is calculated, and so here's your formula for GDP. You take the amount of consumer spending and you add that to investment, okay? Now, a couple of key things here, and I wanna try and break this down. We've already said that this is about spending, okay? Well, three major players, there are three major players in the circular flow diagram. Now, we really didn't talk about but two of them, and the two we really talked about were consumers, right, households, and businesses. So when we talk about spending and what kind of spending is going on in the economy, as far as GDP goes, the first two that we have to include are the consumers and the businesses. Those are the two major players in that circular flow diagram, right? When we drew that circular flow diagram out before, and you got your box here, you got your box here, you got your box here, and I'm not gonna draw all the arrows, okay? But you got your households, we told you you had your households and you got your businesses, right? Your firms. And then you got your product market and your factor market. Okay. With that, money is going and flowing through here. Household households are giving households are giving money to the businesses to buy products, and the businesses are giving money to the households for land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship. And that money just goes around and around in that circle. Right now, that money is starting to slow down. It's not going around as fast, okay? Um, you're starting to see, you know already that households are not spending as much money because they're not going out as much, right? You're not going out to the store. You're not going out to restaurants. You're not going to the movies. You're not going to sporting games. So this amount of money flowing from here to here is slowing down. Well, eventually that amount of money going from here to here is going to start slowing down. You're going to start seeing if this keeps up the way we're going, this businesses are going to start shutting down. Businesses are going to start um, letting people go. 
newest, latest person hired, pers first person let go because we can't afford to pay anymore. Um, if they don't have money coming in, they can't keep spending money out. And um, so that's, that's a big concern. Now, what we didn't teach you, and you will not see this on an EOC or a test, but in all reality, um, there is a third component that should be right here in the middle. And that is the government because the government does get involved. Sometimes the government buys products from businesses. Okay. So you got a little, you got a, sometimes you got a little mini product market here, cut it short a little bit and you don't go through the household, but you got the government buying products. Okay. The government needs new planes. The government needs new desks. The government needs school supplies that goes through here too. Well, the government hires people as well. The government hires people to teach government hires people to, to work, the government hires people to be in the army, whatever it may be, that's going through the factor market here. And so the government spends money as well. So these three major players are our first big things within GDP. Consumers buying things, businesses buying things, and the government buying things. Um, and then the final part here is what we call net exports. And understand, net exports is simply exports minus imports. These two net exports is this right here. This is how you find net exports. You take the amount of exports minus imports. And we'll talk more about that later. Now you can write it all out one big long formula as you see here, or you can abbreviate it. GDP is Y, consumer spending, business investment, government spending, exports minus imports. Okay. Now, what part of this equation is typically negative for the, for the United States? This part right here, okay? Because imports is usually greater than exports. So if it's greater, that means this number right here is going to be negative, which is going to take away from whatever these add up to be. Okay. doesn't necessarily mean the whole thing is going to be negative, but this number will not be as high because this is going to take away from all of these here. Okay. So let's look at them individually. Okay. As we said, Consumption. Consumption is spending by, by households on goods and services. So when you go to, you go to McDonald's and you buy breakfast or lunch or dinner or whatever, um, that spending is considered consumption. That goes into GDP as you spending money on something. When you go to Walmart, when you go buy a new truck, when you go buy new shoes, when you buy new headphones or a new phone or whatever you may buy. Okay. When you buy those things, that is considered consumption. Okay. That is con considered consumption because it is spending by households on goods and services. This is the product market guys and girls. This is the product market and it makes up two thirds of GDP spending. Most of what makes up the GDP for the United States is me and you and everybody else going out and spending money. Okay. Again, which is why GDP is going to be affected by the coronavirus going on because with that happening, um, that's the biggest chunk of our GDP spending. When that goes down, GDP is going to be affected by that. Okay, so I think that's the easy part. Now, investment, spending by businesses to make the business grow. Guys and girls, this is your factor market. Okay, when we say investments, we are not talking stocks and bonds. Okay, when, I, when we say investment, and I'm writing this out here, we are not talking about stocks. We're talking about spending by the business to make the business grow. Okay. What we mean here and let's see if I can get this. Okay. 
we are talking about new employees, hiring, hiring new employees. We're talking about um, new stores. Okay, we're talking about renovation. Okay, um, that's what we mean when we say that the businesses the businesses are spending to make the business grow. Did they open a new location? Did they renovate the place? Did they hire more people? Did they buy new machines? Did they buy new equipment? Did they invest in some new technology? That is investment. Okay, that is how businesses grow, and that growth puts money into the economy because when you hire new employees, you're now paying people to, more people to come work. You're giving more people money to spend in the economy. When you build new stores, when you renovate stores, when you buy new tables and chairs, you change your look, you change your layout, you are paying businesses to do that work. And therefore, then those the employees of that business benefit from it, get more money, spend that money back into the economy. Okay, so know the difference when we say investment here. When we talk about investment as far as GDP goes, we're not talking stocks and bonds. We're not talking about that. We're talking about, we're not talking about investment in the business by outside people. We're talking about the business putting its own money into making that business grow. Okay, make sure you understand that. Now, um, government spending, um, again, pretty straightforward. This is spending by the government at all levels. Okay, we're talking federal government, state government, local governments, on goods and services. Okay, on goods and services. And that's key too, because we're not talking about the government putting money out there as far as welfare, social security, things like that. Um, we're talking about spending by the government to build new roads, build new schools. So let's let's give you some of those examples here. So we're talking we're talking about roads, we're talking about schools, um, we're talking about military. Okay, that's the kind of spending we're talking about: buying goods and services, buying planes for the military. Oh, misspelled that. Let's go back. Okay, planes for the military, new weapons for the military, all this kind of spending, new computers and technology. When they buy goods and services, that goes into the economy as well because, again, there are companies that do this road work, that build these schools. There are, you know, companies like Boeing that makes the planes and, you know, gun companies that make the weapons that the military needs. All of these kind of things. When you see brand new um, you see the sheriff's department driving in brand new cars um, instead of the old school Ford Crown Victoria. Now they're in the Dodge Chargers, and everybody notices, notices when these new car new cars come out. Well, the county can't do that if it's not spending money. The county spends money, and the county's not going to spend money on that unless things are good in the county. Okay, so spending means things are good. Okay, so I'm going to try and. Um, put this down here let's give you another let's give you another text box down here spending let's see spending is good okay spending is good now only place where spending is not necessarily good is when we look at net exports okay Net exports. Okay. Now remember, net means you got to um, net means you got to take something out of it. Remember the different. We talked about the difference between gross income and net income. Gross is before they take anything out. Net is what you have after they take something out. Okay. So net exports, you have to take out imports. Okay. It's great that we export all this stuff. We send this from us to someone else. Okay, so this is going, this is stuff that's going out of our country. Okay, it's made here, sent somewhere else. Okay, minus the imports, which is the stuff coming in from somewhere else. Okay, we don't want, we want people buying our stuff. We don't want to be buying more of other people's stuff, right? 
you want people buying more of yours than you are of theirs. Okay, that's the good thing. Okay, so think about it in terms of a trade surplus or deficit. We want to be, we want a surplus. We want to be sending more stuff out than what we're bringing in. Okay, so that's, that's why you always see people saying, buy local or buy stuff that's made in the USA. American made products, America. That's what you want when it comes to when it comes to exports and imports. Okay, um, that's what we're looking for. Okay, we want their, them buying our stuff, not us buying their stuff. Okay, and again, this is typically what is negative for um, for our GDP as a whole. Okay, now what is real GDP? When you're comparing GDP from one year to another, okay, how did we? How much did we produce last year? How much we produce in this year? How much did we spend last year? How much are we spend in this year? Um, real GDP, okay. Real GDP gives you a real idea or a real picture of price changes because it takes inflation into account, okay? Um, and I'm gonna try and give you a little explanation with this that you see down here, okay? Um, for right now, ignore this part in the middle. Here's the basic thing you want you want to look at. Look at the difference from, from year to year, okay? Nominal GDP is just straight numbers, okay? just straight numbers. Real GDP takes inflation into account. Okay. So one takes inflation into account, the other one does not. Okay. Um, this is where you start to think about um, how much things truly cost. Because if you look here, nominal GDP just looks at the numbers. Um, you're looking in billions of dollars, but let's just look at it. So we're looking at nine, we're looking at nine, eight, nine point eight, we're looking at 10.9, and we're looking at 13.3. Okay, so I'm just trying to, we could do it in billions and all this kind of stuff, but if you really just focus on the, the, the numbers at the, at the beginning here, you can see the difference, okay? 9, 8, 10, 9, 13, 3, okay? As you look, it looks like there's a big, huge growth here from year to year. You go from 9, 8 to 10, 9, that's 1, 1, 1 difference, right? So 9, 8 plus 1, 1 would give you 10, 9. Okay, then you go from 10.9 to 13.3, that's what? That would be 2.4, right? So 2.4. Man, look, from year to year here, from 2000, 2003, 2003, 2006, we're growing like crazy. Okay, that's just looking at the numbers. The problem is, you guys know, if you really think about it, you guys know that over this six year span, prices are going to change. Gas does not cost what it did. Well, actually right now that's a bad example. Um, most things do not cost now what they did a few years ago. Prices slowly creep up. Burgers cost a little more. Milk costs a little more. Cereal costs a little more. Clothes cost a little more. Okay. Um, and at, over time, as these prices go up, you're going to see that. Okay. The question is, are we really seeing as big a difference in spending as we think? Are we spending more? Are we buying more? Or are we just spending more money? You see the difference there? Are we buying more stuff or are we spending more money? If inflation kicks in, if prices go up, 
you can spend more money buying the same amount of stuff. So real GDP takes that inflation into account over here. Okay, so you look at it in constant $2,000. In other words, these numbers for 2003 and 2006 are based on the prices of the year 2000. These over here are nominal or not. These are based on 2003 and 2006 price, prices. That's why you don't see as big a jump. You go from 9.8 to 10.3, you don't even have a full um, jump here. You're only looking at a point, point 0.5 jump. Instead of one, 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 we only jumped half a one, right? And then from 10.3 to 11.4, we only jumped that 1.1, not 2.4. So did, did GDP increase? Yes. Did it increase as much as we thought it did over here? No, okay? So the key thing is, it's called real GDP because it gives you the real idea of how much prices, prices have risen, okay? Real GDP gives you a better idea. Um, so it, it levels things out a little bit and takes things into consideration, okay? Okay, so what's the main point to get when it comes to GDP? Okay, the main point to get when GDP is a good economy. Oh, and I, I have to go back here. The main point is a good economy means a higher GDP. Because think about it, when times are good, okay, give me a little text box here. Times are good. People spend money. Okay, people are confident when people got money. People are happy. People spend money. Times are good. People spend. Now, um, on the other hand, main point is when there's a bad economy, we have a lower GDP. And that is simply because when times are bad, people are scared and people hold on to their money, okay? People hold on to, that, to those dollars, okay? That's the essence of GDP. Times are good, more consumer spending, more business spending, more government spending, okay? When times are bad, less consumer spending, less business spending, less government spending. Okay. That should be pretty simple and straightforward for you, but that's, that's your notes for um, day seven, okay, on covering GDP. Now, um, the next, um, today with that, that's going to be it for your guided notes, so you can stop there on your guided notes for today, but um, I'm going to go ahead and give you an idea of what your assignment is going to be for today, okay? Okay. Um, along with these guided notes for you to fill out, should be posted for you. This assignment here, okay? The GDP components activity. Now I'm gonna give you a little explanation of what you're doing here. These are your the, the different things, the components that make up GDP that we just talked about. Consumption, investment, business investment, remember that, government spending, exports and imports. And then you have links here to five different articles. You need to click on the article, click on the link, read the article, and then in this box here, you simply need to type in what is happening in this area of GDP. Is it increasing or is it decreasing? So according to this, is consumption increasing or is it consumption decreasing? Why do you think that? Give examples from the article of why you feel like that consumption is increasing or decreasing. Read this article here about business investment, then answer here, is business investment increasing or decreasing and why? Very simple, very straightforward assignment um, 
on this one, guys and girls. Um, read the five articles, explain to us what's going on. Is consumption, investment, government spending, exports or imports increasing or decreasing? And give me, give us why that is happening according to examples from the article that you're reading. Okay, now as always, um, with these assignments, um, if there are questions, you can email, you can post a comment on Google Classroom, or um, send us an email, um, ask for a Zoom conference. We have those available as well. And um, just keep working, keep doing your best, and we will see you guys on day eight, where we will go back into the notes and we will cover um, inflation and what that means for us as an economy. Thank you guys. Um, be safe.